Known as the Venice of the North, Bruges is one of Europe's most beautiful cities, as well as one of its best preserved. Its wealth of centuries-old architectural and artistic treasures prompted UNESCO to include the entire historical city center on its World Heritage List in the year 2000. A walk along the maze of winding cobblestone alleys and romantic canals takes the visitor back to the medieval era. With its lively little squares and peaceful front gardens, the city strikes a balance between the surrounding natural environment and the urban landscape. The central location of the market square shows that this was the medieval heart of the city. It was also Bruges' commercial heart, with the center of city administration located in nearby Burg Square. One of the most attractive parts of the city, the marketplace, with its belfry tower and cloth hall, has been a traffic-free zone since October 1996. The Beaufort is to Bruges what the Eiffel Tower is to Paris. A symbol of liberty and a demonstration of power and prosperity, this magnificent tower testifies to the architectural capabilities of the Flemish people. Soaring 83 meters high, it rewards visitors fit and courageous enough to tackle its 366 steps with an incredible view over the city and the surrounding countryside. Bruges is a city with two town squares. The largest one is a market square, the commercial heart of medieval Bruges. The second square is called the Burg, the heart of administrative Bruges. Despite its appearance, the provincial government building, which takes up one whole side of the market, is of recent construction. Designed by Bike and de la Censerie, it dates to the 19th century.
until 1983, the beautiful old chancellery building was home to the law courts. The statues crowning the chancellery date back to the 19th century and were placed there to replace the original sculptures which were destroyed during the French Revolution. They represent various historical figures connected with the law. Many paintings of a historical nature adorn the walls of the Echevin's room. The building has housed the town council since the 14th century, and Arrow in Bruges was one of the richest and most powerful cities in the Western world. The imposing town hall of the principal city of West Flanders clearly shows the spirit of the 14th century Gothic style. The tendency towards the vertical that is seen in this work of medieval architecture is accentuated by the simple and graceful ornaments of the windows. The bonnered statues ensconced in the niches of the façade represent various characters from the lively history of Bruges and the country of Flanders. On the first floor of the town hall is the majestic Gothic room, or Gotische Saal, one of the most important places in the city. Its splendid wooden Gothic vault rests on corbels carved with biblical scenes, themselves masterpieces. The basis of the ribs of the vault represent the four seasons, symbolizing the four elements, earth, water, air, and fire. The Cathedral of the Holy Savior is one of the largest and oldest churches in Bruges. 
Built mostly in the Gothic style, it nevertheless preserves some traces of its Romanesque origins. Construction was begun in 1280 and completed in 1350. The choir and transept of the cathedral are adorned with a series of well-preserved 18th-century tapestries. The Gothic chapels around the aisle are decorated with priceless statues, elegant sculptures, monumental tombstones, and objects of sacred art. The oldest surviving part, dating from the end of the 12th century, form the base of the mighty tower. In 1839, a fire destroyed the roof of the cathedral. William Chantrell, an English architect, famous for its neo-Gothic restorations of English churches, was asked to restore the edifice to its former glory. At the same time, he was authorized to make a project for a higher tower, in order to make it taller than that of Onze Lieve Vuverkirk. The church was damaged by fire four times, including during the French Revolution, but survived those events. The luxurious Grutehuse mansion, which has perhaps the greatest stylistic homogeneity of all the building complexes in Bruges, is presently home to a museum which brings to life this city's tumultuous history. The Grutehuse Museum is housed in the magnificent city palace of Louis, the Lord of Grutehuse, and had been in the family's possession for generations. As a matter of fact, their name is derived from their main economic activity, trading Grut then the most important ingredient of beer. They were granted the exclusive use of the Groot in Bruges, which meant that they alone were allowed to sell it. Is pride and joy comes from the river Raya. Elegant pleasure craft carve their way between elegant swans and lively ducks on the canals. In the evening, the Ryan mirror the graceful facades of the houses that line their banks, creating an unforgettable image. The water, nature, and fascinating play of light make the worries of modern life fade away. Bruges is surrounded by nature. Medieval cities needed to be fortified and defended, so walls were built to encircle them, along with moats or canals. 
Bruce has retained its canals and several of its original city gates, which can be visited by strolling along the promenade around the city. The Pudersloge was, until 1890, home to the city's academy, which lent its name to the street. Now home to the National Archives, this impressive building was carefully restored in the early 1900s. A few centuries ago, when Bruges was still a very important maritime city, the port was located near the Pudersloge. Four of the gates in Bruges' old city walls still remain. The Asses Gate, the Marshal's Gate, the Gate of the Holy Cross, and the Ghent Gate. A peaceful green park now stretches along the place the old city walls once stood. The peace and tranquility around the Asses Gate make this a favorite nesting area for swans. Only three examples have survived of the many windmills that once stood along the city walls. These are the New Parrot, the Boncheri, and St. John's Mill, which is now a museum. The St. John's Mill, together with the Kailaway Mill, are now part of the city's historical heritage. Both windmills still serve as grain mills. St. John's House Mill, from 1770, is still in its original location, while the Kailaway Mill, from 1765, was moved close to the Dampurt in 1996. Bruges is called the Venice of the North. This splendid medieval city is one of Belgium's crown jewels. In no other European city is the feel and look of medieval times so present as it is here in this city not far from the North Sea.